everyone, Tim here from Algonor. Alright, so welcome to part 3 of this little 3 part shindig, where today I'm going to show you how to make a Korg Monotron Delay Patch in Massive. It's that squelchy zappy thing you heard at the start of the video, that comes in over the pitchy sub bass and the uh, gated cymbals from our previous tutorials. Uh, great for tech house, or pretty much any genre to be honest. Uh, now I have a Monotron Delay here in front of me. This is my one, um, and they're really fun to play around with. Uh, this is what it looks like. Looks like that, um, and this is what it sounds like. Heaps of fun, heaps of fun. Anyway, um, now it's cool, but it's a pain in the ass to record, and you can't automate anything in it to match your project. Um, once you've recorded it, you're sort of set. Um, so I figured it might be handy to have this uh, sound in a massive preset so I have more control. The patch has become another one of my writing tools along with my creative master fix rack which I use that I can quickly load up and play with to test out the parts of my song that I'm working on to see what they sound like with another layer of effects or in the case of the master fix rack to uh, you know, do a breakdown, that kind of thing. Kind of what you heard me do at the start of the uh, video. So today we're going to make this patch from scratch and massive and I'm going to give it to you at the end of the video for free. You can do whatever you want with it. Um, and bear in mind we also do a whole lot of free content on our channel as well. Covering lots of genres, uh, especially tech house and house and techno, which is my sort of uh, background. So make sure you check those out and give us a subscribe as well. But let's get into it. Alright, so I have my project here that we've been working on. Um, and it sounds a little bit like this. So I've got Atlas at the start, which is the uh, core drums. I can just swap them out with the click of a button. It's a pretty cool kit, actually. Um, a bunch of loops. We've also made a whole bunch of gated cymbal loops. Again, we made those in Atlas in the first video. That's cool. We've got a pitchy bass here made in Spire from the second video. Oh, that one. This one. Bunch of loops there, you can go and watch that and grab those. And the third part is this monotron patch. Made in massive. Let's pull this up. And it sounds like this. I've got it mapped to my keyboard, and I've also got it mapped to my LPD-8. Are the two knobs in particular, one controlling the speed and amount of the LFO. So it sounds like... Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Okay, so let's do this from scratch. Okay, let's quickly check this monotron picture again and see what we're trying to replicate. So what we've got here is a switch, which uh, changes the standby, turns the thing off. Um, and we set it to triangle or square. This is the uh, shape of the LFO. Uh, for the patch, I've kind of found in practice the square one's not actually that useful. So we're just going to do the triangle. And then we've got five knobs, just five. Um, a rate, uh, intensity, cutoff, time, and feedback. And as well as that little keyboard, which you can essentially play the pitch of the oscillator. So that's what we're trying to copy. Uh, I'll move this off screen again. Okay. Okay, let's do this. Let's start with um, setting up the oscillators. So we're going to go voicing to monophonic. Because you can only play this thing in monophonic. And we're going to set this first oscillator to a saw wave. Done. Uh, let's rearrange this uh, filter section as well. I always set mine up in the serial. Boost those up and mix to be two. So basically it's going into filter one, then filter two, and then off to the master. So what have we got now? Now I can hear there's some enveloping happening on their volume, so let's get rid of that. Uh, I'll set that to zero, set the uh, sustain, which is this level knob, to full. I'm going to leave the release pretty much at zero. I might just dial a little bit away from zero in case it clicks. All right, there's our oscillator. And yeah, it's a bit low if I'm playing it on, I believe that's C2 or 3. So I'm just going to shift this up an octave. Let's say 12. It's going to get really loud really quickly, so let's dial that back with the utility. Alright, cool, so it needs a filter. Um, so let's chuck that on. I'm going to use the daft filter. Let's dial this up to full. Probably give it a bit of resonance as well. I'll give it a 12 o'clock resonance. Makes it sound kind of squelchy, just like the actual device does. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to add some noise. The actual monotron delay has heaps of uh, noise going on in the circuitry. So I'm just going to dial in some white noise. We'll go color to full and amp to, say, halfway. I'll just test out what bright sounds like. 
I think bright sounding a bit uh, nicer. Okay, that's at about 10 o'clock. All right, now what are we up to? The LFO. Okay, so five LFO. Let's stick this on the pitch for oscillator one. Uh, let's have a look at this LFO as well. We need to set this LFO to a triangle, not a sine wave. It will sound kind of weird if you don't. So it's now a triangle. We've got a rate knob and an amp knob, which is the first two knobs on the um, monotron delay. So let's set them up to the macros. So macro one is going to go to rate. It's going to dial it to zero and then turn up the mod amount of that macro to full. Okay, so macro knob one is essentially your rate. Um, let's name that same as the um, monotron delay, rate. And the second knob on the monotron is the um, intensity. So in this case, it's going to be amp of this LFO. So let's get the second knob and put that on amp, dial it to zero, push that to full. And we'll name that, uh, call it the same thing, hey, intensity. Full stop, apparently. Okay, so that's my intensity, that's my rate. Two knobs done. And now what we need to do is uh, dial this up to affect the oscillator over here. So let's keep the these knobs um, at zero. I want to dial this up to say let's say four octaves, so 48. And then we'll start playing with this and seeing how that sounds. That's pretty much it. I'll just quickly test to see if we should go higher up as well. We'll go, what is that, 60? Yeah, I prefer that. Okay, so that's the LFO done. What's the next knob? Uh, on the uh, Montron delay, let's have a look. Uh, cut off, so that's easy enough. So we'll just go back to here and we'll get the third macro and assign that to the daft cutoff. So we'll turn this to zero, turn the three up to full, we'll label it, cut off. Oh yeah, we can't hear anything. Okay, sounding pretty good. Okay, so that's the filter done. Uh, another thing we can do actually here um, while talking about the filters, we can dial up the feedback amount. It warms the sound of the filter, it drives the filter a bit, so it doesn't sound quite so thin and nasally. But to dial it up, and it also adds distortion as you can hear as well. So let's give it a bit of that. 10 o'clock position sounds about good. Okay, that's cool. All right. Let's have a look at that uh, picture again. What have we got? Uh, time and feedback. So this is for the delay. All right, so we can do that pretty easily. Over to massive. Let's set up a fix one to control delay. Now I'm going to choose delay synced. I'm going to set this to uh, left and right. We're going to work in 16th, so I'll put it up to 16. And I'm going to set mine to three and four. Three and four kind of gives you a ping pong style delay. It's not technically ping pong, um, but it gives you that width. So let's give that a listen. You can hear it kind of delaying on each side differently. Um, three and three works quite well as well. Okay, so I'm going to stick with three and four. All right, so we've got, what are those knobs? Time and feedback. Okay, now we can't really control time, unfortunately, in Massive. There's no uh, thing we can assign a knob to. So I'm actually going to assign this fourth knob to just the dry and wet. So it's essentially it's going to be uh, effects amount. So we'll call this... Um, uh, delay and we'll dial that to full I might just set that at halfway and the other thing we want to control then is feedback that's easy fifth knob is feedback set that to zero dial it to full label it okay feedback that's pretty good that's pretty good We've also got a damp knob we can play with. So this is filtering the delay signal, so it's a bit more, um, so it's not as bright. You don't want it full bright. Sounding quite convincingly like the uh, monotron delay. Now what I also added to my um, other patch as well was a little bit of reverb. So I'm going to set up a reverb here just to kind of um, smooth the whole thing out a little bit. So this is where we've got three more knobs. We can kind of assign it to a few more things and give our own spin to it. So let's go and check. Um, I'm going to check uh, seven as your reverb amount. I'm going to leave six free. Well, I'll do it now, actually. I'm actually going to put six on this dampening knob. 
that can really change the tone of what's going on, especially if you have a really high feedback. So let's go damp at zero, put that up to full. We'll call that damp. All right, and then we'll set it to like uh, two o'clock position. All right, reverb. Okay, so we want, uh, we'll call this verb. And then what we're gonna do here is turn that up, obviously. So that's your reverb amount. I think a size of around two o'clock position. Don't want too big. And it's quite bright as well. So let's pull that color back. It's actually a lot of reverb. In this particular case, I might actually dial this back to halfway. That gives the whole thing a bit more space, which is quite cool. All right, so we've got one more knob here, knob eight, which you might as well assign to something. So what have we got? What are some options? We could do resonance, but to be honest, it sounds pretty good where it is. Um, feedback or noise. Um, again, um, not the kind of thing you probably would change a lot. But the one thing that might be quite useful is the waveform type. So right now we're using a saw wave, but we could be a square wave as well. What does that sound like? It's quite different. So let's map that up. So we'll go number eight to the wave table position, set it to zero. That goes to full. And I'll call this um, oscillator shape. All right, cool. So there we go. Square wave. Saw wave. And that's basically it. That is the Monotron Delay made in massive. Let's give that a bit of a comparison. So I've got mine here. You're hearing it through the mic, so it'll sound shit. Okay, and how's the sound? Uh, sounds way cooler, <laughs> way better. All right, cool. So let's test this out. Um, let's map this up to some real world knobs. So I'm gonna go configure. I'm gonna hit our uh, rate and intensity. Turn that off. I'm gonna map this to my LPD8, real handy little device. So those are mapped up now. Rate and intensity which is also mapped up to my Master Effects uh, Creative Effects tool, Creative Effects um, chain that I use in all our videos. We have a video on this as well. Basically, it's kind of like Data Life, Endless Smile. It's like an uplift knob, delay, all the kind of various things you can do to add some immediate effects to your song, uh, so to mock up some breakdowns, that kind of thing. All right, so what does it sound like? All right, sick. Okay, let's get a beat going and have a little bit of a play. A little bit of a breakdown. There it is. All right, and there you have it. That is making a Korg Monotron Delay Patch in Massive. It's simply a matter of um, setting up all these macros to control um, various LFOs and bits and pieces that uh, mimic the hardware device, which looks like this. And it's a lot of fun just to throw into your song while you're writing stuff to get the impression of what it might sound like with um, more effects, the kind of thing you might use uh, while writing, and then later on delete when you're doing a final um, arranging and that kind of stuff. So bear in mind as well, this is part three of a little three-part video where previously in part two, I did um, a pitch bending sub bass made in Spire, way over here. And I also did um, those gated symbols, which was made in Atlas. So if you want to check those out, go to the channel, watch the videos and give us a subscribe. That'd be great. And yeah, of course, I'm going to give you this massive patch as well for free. You'll find it in the description and on our website. So you can go and grab that and use it in your tracks and go and be merry. Otherwise, that's it from me today. Um, thanks for watching and catch you next time.